Heads up, gamers. It's the Weekender. It's a, bit, <laughs> it's a bit different from what you guys are probably normally used to watching, but it's completely different for us too. So we are all in lockdown in this part of the world as well, as I imagine many of you are out there as well. So we, um, we've done our best. We've cobbled together a show. No guarantees how good this is going to be, but we're going to do our damn best. They're too flawless. Yeah. Uh, so... And we have almost all the Weekender team here. Brother Lloyd will be joining myself, Justin, and Jerry to, on Sunday morning for XLBS. Now you're starting to remember. But you have the four of us to take you through this weekend in gaming. But before all of that... <sighs> oh, you cheat. <laughs> what? That's not fair. <laughs> oh, you see, th th this is the thing. Because he's at home now... He can drink because he doesn't have to drive home. You sneaky, sneaky get. I wish you'd know. Uh, you see, there, there, are, there are ways and means of dealing with the flu apocalypse, and I am <laughs> totally on it. So <laughs> I'm going to, uh, this is the skull of my enemy. I'm going to drink to this. So, right. This is going to get interesting. Steps we're taking. We've got a few updates for you guys just before we uh, crack into the news and uh, other bits and pieces that's going on this week. Um, firstly, obviously, we've had to put contingency in place to try and... Um, to try and... Uh, I don't want to use the word survive it. We're trying to survive it as a little business, as a little company. Mitigate but, the damage. But mostly we're just trying to mitigate. You know, um, hey, uh, Lloyd, why is Lloyd here? And why is Lloyd here? Hello, Lloyd. You've popped in to say hello. Yeah, uh, we're we're in the show, Lloyd. Hi. You okay? Yeah, we're not. Yeah, we're not in the show because I haven't hit record on my side yet. No, no, you're not in the front stage show, Lloyd. You're not in it, Lloyd. Oh. Okay. Bye, Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Go away. Hello, Lloyd. Yo, hey, Lloyd. I tell you what. You're here now. You may as well just stick around. <laughs> Oh, we have the entire Weekender team on this one. That's fine. Flawless. Flawless every time. I'll, I'll just work away in the background here. <laughs> up, up, it's update, okay, Lloyd. Updating the post that you still need to show on your front end show. Yeah. Uh, right. So, um, steps we're taking. We have been putting in contingency and stuff uh, in place. So uh, most of us now have dispersed to, uh, to isolate. Some of us are in forced isolation. Rai, we hope you're feeling better. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of us are in voluntary isolation. <laughs> so well, I'm, I'm technically not, because look where I am. I'm in the office. Yes, but this is, this is why most of us have moved, because um, we've kept the essential folks uh, there at Beast of War Towers, on Tabletop Towers, um, to continue with all of the picking, the packing, and the shipping um, from the from the online store, mm -hmm. so we have loads of stock. We have all of the packing materials. We were fortunate; we got big deliveries of pallets of uh, this stuff in. So we have all the packaging, all of the stock, and all of the sweeties, and uh, everything on that side is running smoothly. So we are getting hobby stuff out the door and into people's hands. So if you're going to find yourself in isolation and you need some bits and pieces of hobby stuff and you like to, to pick it up from store.ontabletop.com, so far we've got all that running like a fresh whistle, nice and smoothly. We, as you can see, are endeavoring to try and continue to make uh, the shows like The Weekender and everything else. Um, we um, have some plans and stuff in place that we're going to be uh, putting together to continue with the content flow going out to you guys and to try and help uh, as well uh, because we know a lot of people are going to be getting particularly bored during this mm -hmm. next while. We're going to pull some of the past Cult of Games content, some past episodes of XLBS, etc. And we're going to pump that out to all of you guys on YouTube. So you have a more steady uh, stream of some of our short format and then the longer format XLBS stuff that you can tune into. Mm. Ben, Rye, Jerry, myself are all uh, band together to create um, some more written articles and things like that as well. So that you can chillax on the sofa with a beer and just um, read through some of the, the things that are going on and some of the stuff that's going on in our minds. And... 
we're basically just going to try and keep things business as usual, keep you guys entertained. Mm -hmm. um, in another um, step that oh. we've taken. Can I just ask Justin to do one little thing for me, Warren? Yes. Can you let me record this, please, Justin? Record from now, Lloyd. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I have to. <laughs> I have to give Lloyd permission to record. <laughs> he wasn't allowed, permission, Justin. <laughs> yeah, no, it was just like, oh, my brain. Ah, oh, dumbass. Sorry, folks. All right, you are now set to record, Lloyd. There we go. There we go. Right. One of the, uh, look, this, this whole situation that we all find ourselves in, um, it's frightening. It's frightening mostly because um, nobody, none of us will have really been in anything just quite the same as this. Um, so one of the things that we understand is, you know, as well as people's physical health, um, there's going to be a lot of people out there struggling, um, particularly probably with a sense of isolation. Mm. Being cooped up in the house is not as much fun as, as, as most people think. So what we've done is we run a private Discord server for our Cult of Games members. So the, the Cult of Games members are, they previously are backstagers. These are the guys and gals that pay three seventy nine a month just to help us be able to pay the bills, keep food on the table, keep the whole thing going forward. Uh, what we've done with those guys is we're opening up the, the Discord server, the Cult of Games Discord server to all of our community members so that you can come in there with us and um, uh, hopefully it helped reduce your isolation just a little bit. And it's not Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a nice, chillaxed place. Um, we intend to keep it that way. There's, um, there's none of the ranting and raving that goes on out there. And we can we can enjoy our hobby uh, together. So um, we wanted to open that up. In the show notes will be the Discord link to join it. Also in the show notes will be a link to the user guide because we did a little PDF user guide to gradually introduce you to it. And if I can get Justin to bring it up on screen. Uh, um, I, I will Right. Uh, I don't promise that there won't be anything very weird turning up here, but... Oh, well, here. People are going to have to accept that the, the shit posting does happen, but it's good <laughs> shit posting. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, hopefully you guys should all be fit to see that now. Right. So here's, some, here's what happens. Whenever you join, you, uh, you will end up <laughs> in a pick-a-team area. <laughs> um, in that pick-a-team area, we run three houses in here. The House of Three Truths, the House of Rejuvenation, and the House of Water. The House of the Rising Sun will come later on. <laughs> so, you should go into the House of Water there, because it's, so, it's the best one. Well, I, I, right. It's maybe worth telling them. So um, I'm in the house of rejuvenation. So I'm there with all the juvies, as we like to call ourselves. Jerry is uh, in there in the house of the wet ones, uh, the house of water. And Justin, from time to time when he remembers, is, it actually goes into the house of three truths, where all the alpha strikers are. <laughs> <laughs> if, you don't select, if you don't select a team... <laughs> at the point of joining, I'm going to stick you in the house of three truths with Justin. So I, I, got <laughs> I highly, Hi, we, we might actually get some activity in my house then. That'd be nice. I highly recommend that you, there, you, there you was some. Team. yes, there, there was. Now, if you go across Justin, um, yes. Um, I want to show people the categories. So the reason we have these houses is because we run little house challenges and things like mm -hmm. that where um, each of our teams, we get together and we create something and then we have a bit of a laugh uh, and stuff about it. Um, once we get this, this situation under control a little bit, we have a couple of cool uh, house challenges that we're going to run. So you'd be very welcome to come into that. We also have the COG Sanctuary. Sanctuary. That's our main COG chat. That's where everybody, like, what I love about that is every morning without fail, people pop in there and just say, good morning, folks. How's it going? Mm -hmm. um, this is as close to the global family 
as you're likely to find. And, and I just want to say thank you to every single one of the people that are in here without fail, helping us all, um, even before all of this coronavirus stuff kicked off. They're in there acting as a support for one another and for mm-hmm. us. And um, it, I just want to thank them because um, it, it, it's special. You don't find that in many places. We have Trash Talk for all of the music videos. Careful now, Justin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I'll leave it on this one. <laughs> yeah, so for all of the music videos and other bits and pieces of funnies. And then we have the Share Your Stuff where people uh, post links of just what they're working on and the, the, their projects and links to any updates and things Ooh. that they're doing. That's John's one. That's looking really good. It's nice, that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. We have also, um, as a matter of urgency, um, created a, a new uh, category called Boredom Feeds. Okay? Mm-hmm. And Boredom Feeds are curated. <laughs> So, um, at the bottom of boredom feeds, you will see fire hose. Okay, is this so, safe to click? Yes, 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 it is. So, you guys who join in the Discord can post into the fire hose. So, what we're after is documentaries, um, cool videos, good articles, stuff that is meaty that people will actually want to um, to engage with as we start to suffer boredom going forward. Our crack team then curate that. And if you go back across then, Justin, Uh we then divide that up into the historical feed, a sci-fi feed, a fantasy feed, solo gaming, and 3D printing. We're very happy to create other feeds in there, guys, as you want them. But the idea being that gradually over time, these, uh, these feeds build up into stuff that is worthy of watching not just a bird eating out of a bird feeder. <laughs> That's the best you'll ever find thank, on thank, 3D thanks, bread. Jerry. Nice, nice one, welcome. Jerry. <laughs> Anything but, um, I can do to help. But uh, do let us know. For example, if you go into historical there, Justin, um, I posted a link to a great hour-long um, YouTube kind of mini presentation documentary about the Third Crusade that I found very enjoyable. And then a couple of weeks ago, I was melting Justin's mind with the Assyrians. So what I did was I went into my own personal YouTube channel and I created a playlist of a lot of the Assyrian uh, source material that I had found. And I I put a link into my playlist. So if you're interested in learning a bit more about the Assyrian siege of Jerusalem and the destroyer, that's your playlist. You'll get some good stuff in there. Right, that's the second of the updates. The third of the updates, um, again, we need your help, guys. Um, YouTube doesn't syndicate our videos. Something has happened somewhere down the line, and basically we have, uh, it looks like a shadow ban, because No matter what we do, no matter how many thumbs up you guys give us, like we've had videos that reach nearly a thousand thumbs up and it still doesn't syndicate or go out uh, through to uh, our subscriber base. So for this next one, we really need your help to to share, okay? Adepticon has been cancelled till next year. Mm -hmm. Uh, Salute has been postponed slash cancelled to next year. And UK Games Expo has managed to move themselves towards the end of August and have a date locked in for there. Most businesses and little companies in our industry are really struggling right now. Um, I'll hold my hands up and say, man, we are feeling it as well. I have never seen anything quite like this. And like most of us, we're just trying to work out what it's going to take to survive and be still in one piece to try and get out at the other end of it. It's interesting times. With these shows cancelling and postponing, there's a load of small businesses out there who really needed that um, exposure. Now, with each of these shows, we've been close partners with them all for years and have, and, and have done massive amounts of coverage and, and in-show coverage uh, for them. 
and our hearts go out to the organizers because uh, I know that they are heartbroken over this. This is such a difficult um, thing for them to do because they're, those guys are going to be worrying about their livelihoods and about the, the, the costs of the show and money that they maybe can't get back, insurance that they may not be able to claim from. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is no easy ride for anybody in this. What we're trying to do is um, we have pulled together a crack sub team within On Tabletop. He's called Tom. <laughs> and we, uh, we are Tom, Lloyd, and myself, and uh, Tim, Nakchak, are we're going to cry, try and repurpose uh, the, the project system that is on the On Tabletop platform. Our hope is to be able to create a place to host kind of like a virtual mini conventions, virtual convention of some sort. So what we're doing is we're going to try and reach out to all of the exhibitors who are going to be at each of those shows. And uh, that we've got two forms that, uh, that you can fill in. If you're an exhibitor, um, we have a form here that you can uh, fill in and just tell us which convention you are attending. And if you're a content creator out there, we have a form that you can fill in, and these links are in the show notes, because um, I'll explain what we're trying to do and why we're trying to hook all of you guys up. So, the way we envisage this is that uh, we're going to, uh, this would be completely free of charge for all of these companies. We're going to try and support this as best as we possibly can with the infrastructure that we have available to us. We're inviting each company uh, that was going to be uh, exhibiting at, um, at one of these shows uh, to uh, fire up a project in our project system. Behind the scenes, we will collate those projects from those companies into the appropriate virtual con um, uh, that, that we're putting together. And then in their projects, we're, uh, we're, they'd be, we're inviting them to basically post offers, uh, little updates of how they're getting on, pictures of their products, any videos that they want to link to, um, and basically just use it as a kind of like a virtual convention that we can all dip in and out of by clicking on um, those guys that would be in at Adapticon, those guys that were going to be at Salute. And we can go in and, and see their latest updates, see their new releases, and, uh, and hopefully you know, click through and buy some stuff off their, their online stores or, or whatever and try and help them out and uh, see if we can try and keep our industry as intact as we can. Um, the important thing for us all to remember in this, as crises go, the one thing, and I'm no expert, but the one thing we have going for us in all of this is that we know sooner or later this is going to come to an end. Um, if we were in a situation of famine or war or, or whatever, uh, it would be a very different scenario because the, the uncertainty would be, uh, would be much more. We can be certain that a pandemic sooner or later is going to come to an end, and the patterns of this pandemic means at the end of it, um, as hard and as awful as it's going to be, there'll be a lot of uh, able-bodied people will be there and able to get on with their lives and, and keep going forward. If this were war or famine, there'd be no guarantees of any of that. The, the other thing about um, uh, this kind of situation and crisis we're in is that generally it's not going to have much of an effect on our physical infrastructures um, so long as, uh, as, as society we can try and keep them basically maintained. So yes, although governments are pumping monies and stuff like that in, we should be able to, um, as, as a, a global community, pay for all of that when we get out the other side. Again, if this were war or famine, um, war especially, you know, our physical infrastructure would be being destroyed left, right, and center. So as bad as this is, we, there, there is, there is light at the end of the tunnel on this. So if we can do our bit as a community to try and keep, uh, keep 
the connections, the, 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 the businesses, the, the social aspects of what we have and what, what we have all created together over these years, if we can try and keep it intact so we can get out the other side, then it will all be sitting there waiting for us um, when, when we get there. And that's important. You know, we'll be able to hopefully together protect our livelihoods, um, uh, protect just the stuff that makes us feel human. So I'm asking you guys to help us share those links with any of the small companies uh, that we're going to be at those shows and uh, we'll say to them, look, let's try and create a centralized place where you can come and you can post about what you're doing. For all of you content creators out there, if you're interested in helping these little companies through um, online interviews or uh, writing up pieces and stuff like that for them, please fill in the, the online the, the content creators form because what we're going to do is uh, we're going to basically have that all of those entries available to all of those uh, small companies out there and say to them look here are the profiles of other people who can help uh, you create some content and can help you talk about what you're doing and help you spread the word, not just through these uh, projects, but out into the wider world that link back into your projects and back into your little online stores uh, and whatever. So if, if you can help and we can all help them together, please fill in those forms. We'll distribute the information and we'll try and use the, the infrastructure we have in place to give us somewhere where we can start to kind of pull and centralize all of this and uh, give us somewhere where we can go and show our support and have some fun and look at some cool new stuff that I'm sure most of us have been waiting for. Well, it's one of those things a lot of people have been saying online is, you know, in self-isolation, it gives us time to actually sit down and do some hobby. You know, you can actually sit down and maybe punch through that project that you've been waiting to work on for months and months pull down that board game that you bought <laughs> at a con last year because you thought it was cool. Yes, Lloyd, we know. We know. Gary is Clash sitting there. Spears. Gary Clash is sitting it. there grinning going, he oh, yeah. He did that to me. <laughs> yeah. now, hang on, Lloyd, 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 Lloyd. Yeah. You don't know where everybody else is. So, for everybody at home and for you guys. So, Jerry's over here. Oh, Hi, Jerry. Right. Ben's is here. Reversed? No, he isn't. Hey, either. Ben. <laughs> uh, Warren is here. Yeah. Can I poke uh, him in the head? Can I poke no, him but in can, the head? Can I tickle your nuts? You, you, can, you can tickle Jerry. <laughs> and Lloyd, you are down over here. So I think the way you meant the point was up and across to Jerry. Oh, that's other weird. Way, other thought... way, other way. Other way. There you, there you go. At an angle. At an angle. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly I have the wacky wibbling million of alarm. Deal. Uh, well, look, um, uh, apologies for the big long monologue, guys. Um, again, if you can help us get a thousand likes on this video, smash that like button for all the good it does. But smash it anyway. You never know. Well, but it's, it's the old thing. A, yeah. take, take the link share it with people, try and uh, see if we can get as many exhibitors and other content creators. Let's, let's pile together on this and try and see if, uh, what help uh, we, can, we can give folk. Especially a lot of these very small companies use Solid as the kicking off point in the UK for the rest yeah. of the year. So they, they hold the releases for Solid um, yeah. because there's such a big footfall that it generates a lot of the advertising for them, um, which is obviously just going right. to be begging now. On that topic, um, uh, I'm going to say, um, yeah, it's Friday night and the weekend starts now. So weekend now starts, and as is now a ritual, we have to do the most important part of the show. This is our support the little guy, and Ben is looking like he's going to try and get a bribe or a kickback here. It is, of course, <laughs> Indie of the Week, and Ben. Yes. 
who did we select for Indie of the Week this week, did? Uh, so the people that we selected for Indie of the Week this week are Oathsworn Miniatures, who <gasps> no! are the, the wonderful company, the wonderful pair of Michael and Joe, who uh-huh. are behind one of my favourite games of all time, Cord Burrows and Badgers. But you've probably no! heard about me talking. Which I've talked about it all the time across pretty much every episode we've ever done, probably. Um, but I've never you... seen a guy more obsessed with badgers than you. <laughs> but you see, it's not just badgers. You also get things like Rose. the little town mice. Yeah. And one of the, yeah. One, uh, I, I'm so obsessed with badgers that Gaz even sent me a mug that says half man, half badger on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which half uh, is the badger? Uh, the, the bottom half. But so for those people that don't know, uh, Bros and Badgers is a skirmish based campaign style game that has been uh, created by Michael that sort of follows on from classic skirmish games uh, with the likes of Mordheim and those kind of things. So you make a little warband, you spend all your pennies to build up the warband, and then you take them out to play through a huge campaign against your friends, and you sort of go through the highs and lows of doing that with injuries and finding treasure and all that kind of thing as well. So if you like those classic games like Mordheim, this is a perfect kind of game to step into. The other interesting thing about it, of course, as you've probably been seeing from seeing it on the screen here, is that it doesn't feature humans and elves and dwarves and all that kind of thing. Instead, it features animals. So if you are a fan of the likes of Redwall and you like anthropomorphic fantasy and that kind of thing, not furries, definitely not furries, uh, then this is definitely one for you to go and check out and, uh, this, and have a look at some of the models they've done. So. This card thing we're seeing now is awesome. Oh, yeah, that, that's um, actually part of a new scenario that they brought out. Uh, I think it was actually last year at Salute where they did a, a scenario where you had to try and either defend or attack the cart and steal from the people on board it. And it's called, I think it's called the Stoked Bart one as well, which is a little mm. bit of a, a, a joke for trucking fans out there. Good old Eddie. Huh? If, huh? if, if we take Saga as an example, Ben, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, could, you could play Saga with this stuff now that it's carts and stuff. You could actually, you could play loads of stuff. I've seen people using these to play through Reigns of Shadow Deep. I've seen people using the models to play D&D with them as well and using animals instead of the different races that exist in D&D. Uh, so, but yeah, there's, there's an absolutely amazing range that they've been doing re- um, over the last couple of years. Every Kickstarter brings in maybe about a dozen new models. Uh, they've done them from the size of little tiny mice, as you can see there, all the way through to large, massive things like badgers. They've recently done a red kite, which is absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Talked mm. about that on the website this weekend, mm. this week as well. So, um, yeah, a really fantastic looking range that they've got there. And they don't just do miniatures either, they've also got terrain and all sorts of things too. So, uh, well, you've given us the, the oh. terrain here. Yeah. So, the terrain that they've done is actually um, done this in conjunction good. with um, Sarissa Precision. So, if you know those guys and they do their MDF stuff, which it comes unpainted, they've done a whole bunch of really nice kits for that, which are all theme to the world. They also did used to do some resin pieces and things, uh, but um, they're a little bit too expensive to, to, to make nowadays. Uh, but hopefully we'll see them coming back. And they, they normally tend to be like event exclusives and stuff. But um, yeah, the buildings are really, really nice. I've actually got a couple of them myself. I've got the, the big tavern and uh, the little tiny house that you're seeing there as well. Cool. Um, so yeah, you're, you're really, really nice. Ben, yeah. I want to make you a borough. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna do you know what i'm gonna do this man i'm gonna make you a burrow okay I, 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 you know what i would even i'd live in a burrow <laughs> here if the way things are going we could all end up living in a we burrow. could do yeah <laughs> the, the hobbits had it right the first time around yeah, so. <laughs> no but I, I think i'm gonna do this so if i made you a burrow no mm-hmm. not a hobbit burrow a stinky <laughs> <Slash Burmy Burrow. laughs> it's an oozy burrow. It's, yeah. it's funny. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, you, you, you It's you funny that you. It's funny that you should mention hobbits, though, because the first two we were looking at, I thought, ooh, a bit of Middle Earth with those as well. So yeah, they could, e- they could easily work for that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm That's gonna. I'm, cool. I'm gonna try and dig out all our old polystyrene. Right, and I'm going to carve it all out, and I'm going to hit it with a heat gun to make it all wrinkly and oozy, and then I'm going to dig out the recipe, <laughs> Beast of War Magi Mix, and I'm going to Magi Mix the shit out of that for you, man. And I, I, really I would brown I, and oozy. I definitely love to play in your burrow. I think that would be look wonderful. So yeah, and we'll my do that. Burrow is forward <laughs> for you to play in it. So. Uh, I was just going to say as well, as well as all the stuff that you've seen they've done for Bros and Badgers, they also have another range which is called Sensible Shoes. 
And this is a set of um, female adventurers that they did uh, a couple of years ago now. Because they actually started out doing um, smaller projects, like he's done an amazing, Michael's done an amazing Odin, uh, which was awesome on Slipnir, which is amazing, so his horse. But they also did this dungeon delving range, which is a bunch of um, characters for you to use, to use in D and D as well. So if you you know see the animals, but you want to go do something to do with D and D and role playing in general, then you can go and check these ones out as well. They're really really cool. Nice. Pretty cool. Nice. The okay. um, big red kite that you got on the yes. site there. Yeah. That's part of their last Kickstarter, which actually goes up for full retail release this weekend. Yes. Bruce, so, so. Yeah, so all the stuff from their Kickstarter tends to just drift over straight into their web store after they've delivered it to anybody, everybody else, uh, the, mm-hmm. the campaign. So, yeah, that red kite's going to be there. I'm, it's going to be part of my new Highland Clans, Burrows and Badgers warband that I'm building. Last year I did uh, like a Robin Hood-themed one, but this time I'm going to go for like a, a Highland Clans one. And I'm going to attempt... Tartan. I say tartan. Yes. Nice. Well, hang on, hang on, Ben. Surely that warband should be nothing but owls, because they can go what man. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> <laughs> this is well you're in a studio far away. Just... <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good, man. <laughs> right, Ben. Awesome pick. Awesome pick. Um, that is your indie of the week. Coming to you from the center of northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh- you love. It's the mu- news. <laughs> okay, Ben. Time for the news. What else is going on in the world right now? <laughs> yeah, so the first big bit of news actually comes out of the guys at uh, Corvus Belly. And yeah. this is the news that they're bringing together a new battle pack, which is called Operation Caldstrom, which is up for pre-order right now. So Operation Caldstrom is a new battle pack that sees you, uh, well, sees you take control of either Pan Oceana or Yu Jing. Mm-hmm. And the focus is on the clash between those two. But the really cool thing about this is that you'll notice there's also a subtitle to the box, which is called Code One. Yeah. And Code One uh, is applicable to a new set of rules that they've developed for the game, which are effectively a getting started version of Infinity. Because Infinity is a great game, but it's also quite in depth and quite structurally deep and there's lots of different things you need to try and work out but they've tried to cut down a lot of that stuff to make it very very easy for you to just dive in and start playing their skirmish game and really get your hands around the rules and stuff like that yeah so code one code one i think is a master stroke from corvus belly because um they've been working for a long time on the new version the new full version of infinity yes um, well, i think yeah. we're up to n4 n4 will be the new one uh yeah so n3 is n3 is the current one n4 is yeah. coming uh, sort of summertime i think so yeah yeah not so too, n4, not too far away um um uh, i think n4 is a little way down the down the down the way so n4 is going to be your big full game of infinity that um whenever whenever it drops it's going to support all of the miniature range they're all going to be in there okay but before we get to n4 they're launching code 1 and uh code 1 is uh, being specifically aimed at um faster lighter games of infinity yes. for yeah. newcomers yeah. Um, or for folk that are maybe just don't have the time uh, to commit, you know, to bigger, heavier games. I'm it, noticing a- something about this box, Warren, just very quickly, if I can mm-hmm. break in. They've changed the material for the buildings, if you look closely here. They're now using a heavy-duty cardboard, which I quite like. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it's, it, it's beautiful, beautiful stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, uh, I don't want to take away from the gorgeousness of the set. The set is mm-hmm. lovely. But... This is Corvus Belly. The set was always going to be lovely. But the bit that's really appealing to me is is where they're headed with Code 1. Mm -hmm. And Code 1 and N4, so Code 1 is not a temporary thing. Code 1 and N4 are going to live side by side. Code 1 will use a reduced subset of the miniatures range. So it'll have, um, uh, it'll, it'll not have as much choice as N4, but what will be there will be supported in the Code 1 possibly using cards or something like that but the great thing about this is for the ITS and possibly for the campaigns and things that uh, Corvus Belly do um, they're going to have uh, code one levels so if you Mm -hmm. want to play in a code one tournament you'll be able to play in a code one tournament so I I think I think it's awesome you know because it's um I love infinity I, I love the aesthetic of it and everything else but 
as many people uh, out there have. I don't, I don't have a massive amount of gaming time uh, mm. these days, and um, so playing in an Infinity tournament would be, would be, uh, would be a difficult thing for me because I, I, I'm never going to be able to, certainly not the way things are, invest the amount of time and energy that I would need to be able to get up to speed with the full N3 rule set or what will probably be the full N4 new rule set. So code one really appeals to me on this. I, I think it, I yeah. think it could be great. It, I don't know if code one is going to follow um, along the same lines as the <sighs> defiance. Um, I don't know if it's following along the same lines as defiance, but I've got to say if they've learned a few things from defiance, then that bodes well for code one. Because mm -hmm. Defiance was a joy to play, uh, an absolute yeah. joy to play. I was going to say it's, one, it's it's definitely one of those things to bear in mind and, and reiterate as well is that uh, uh, Corpus Belli have been very stringent in saying like Code One and N Four and is going to be supported going forward. That's a massive part of this, and it's going to have that tournament sort of support and things you were saying as well. Mm -hmm. The actual Code One rules, I believe, um, they're obviously going to be available as part of this set, so Operation Calstrom. But they're going to be available uh, digitally down the line as well, which obviously means they can update them and change them as well later on if it's, they need to too. So, it's a really sweet idea because you might want to be a competitive player. You might feel, oh, I love a bit of competition in tournaments and things. But like Warren's saying, you're just a player who doesn't have the time to keep on the bandwagon yeah. of the main game as such, keeping up mm. to speed with everybody. This gives you the opportunity to keep up to speed because. I assume there will be releases, but probably not at the same pace as the main game, I guess. Mm. Yeah. And that way you can play this game at your club and stuff week in, week out, and be able to keep up to speed with it without having to be quite as on top of it as the other game. It's See, I, cool. I have to wonder, also... are some of those tactical, you know, those deep gamers going to maybe look at this and go, you know what, I can maybe handle the meta on this a little better. I can maybe be a little more competitive, a little more cutthroat with this if they want to play that style. Yeah, well, um, we're going to find out because um, I believe that the Code One rules, whenever they whenever they come out, will be available for download. Mm -hmm. So we'll be all able to go in and, and check them yeah. out. And I'm, to, I'm very much looking forward to it. I just wanted to also um, point out that um, as part, as obviously it's all available for pre order right now. Um, so as well as the actual Operation Caldstrom box, which you know comes with Pano and Yujing and all the bits and pieces you need to start. There's also a couple of extra bits and pieces. So they've got a new Dire Foes box, which is called Retaliation, uh, which is a um, uh, sort of two key interesting personalities going up against each other. These ones have been themed after Pano and Yijing, and they're also bat they're battling through a little tiny scenario. So that's a nice little additional thing that's been added to the mix. And then there's also the special uh, miniature that is available as part of the, the pre-orders too, which is Liang Kai the wandering Shaolin monk as well. So there's some really cool options there for those who want to dive in at this pre-order period and get some stuff as well, directly from uh, Corpus Belly. So, yeah. Nice. Um, also, a big shout out to Corpus Belly because they did something very cool this week um, that, that I appreciate a lot, and that was that they have made the Adepticon exclusive miniature um, available via uh, uh, independent retailers. So oh, fantastic. The, yeah. To help the independent retailers out. So if you um fancy that you don't necessarily have to buy that um directly from corvus belly you can get the uh, get the box with the exclusive miniature from your independent retailer to help them out as well Brilliant. so yeah. cool <laughs> right gw <clears throat> are dropping tomorrow morning prophecy mm -hmm. of the wolf yeah what so, do we think uh, this is the new oh, sort of second to get it up here yeah so the <laughs> he says that, yeah. Getting, getting older, there Justin. You're getting older. Did, did, yeah, you're getting old, man. No, I mean the webpage. Come on. Family show. Yeah. Family so show, this is, really. This, this is effectively the new... I, I, I hazard to call it a starter set, but it's a starter set, effectively, for you to dive in and start playing with uh, the two massive new models that got released, uh, well, again, released this weekend for pre-order, and that's Ragnar Blackmane and Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka. That's his full title, and you should address him as such. 
uh-huh. as, well, as well as the two big main characters that we actually had a look at um, uh, last week as well. They've also got some supporting characters. So the Orcs have got themselves the Knobs and Mega Knobs, and uh, the Space Wolves have got some Space Marines in what I believe are called, is it Phobos Armor, Justin, is that the one? Uh, yeah, it's Phobos Armor. I actually, I'm still griping about this, that Ragnar's not in Phobos Armor, because those guys <laughs> in the Phobos Armor can deploy up to nine inches away from uh, their opponent, but Ragnar can't, so all of his auras and stuff aren't going to be affecting them. So I'm, Is Phobos I'm still... Armor like a deep strike or something, or what? Uh, no, what? so it's, it's more like a, a stealth armor. So you remember when Shadow Spear came out, you had the, the captain mm-hmm. of Phobos Armor, the librarian, the lieutenant, and all the squads, and now you've got the Invector Tactical Warsuit. Basically, they're like a, a tactical insertion force, so they're very quiet, very stealthy, very stripped down. They're still tough as hell, but they've just got some nice, they can sneak in behind like enemy lines and stuff, which is really cool. It doesn't sound very space wolfy. Uh, see, I don't know because thematically, thematically, I'm I'm struggling with that. Stealthy, you know, uh, uh, for for a space wolf. Like uh, any wonder uh, Ragnar's not going to the, to jump in with him. Look at him. He doesn't... <laughs> see, I, I, I kind of find it weird that they're using him with them because he was always like the blood claw captain. You know, I would yeah. expect these guys if they're stealthy, they're going to be like the long fangs, the the oldest wolves, the ones who've got the beast most under control. Uh huh. Uh, but interesting. What, what, one, of the things, one of the things that um, came up in some discussions in the comments and stuff is that it's really nice to obviously see Gazgul back. It's great to see him. Sorry, yeah, Gazgul, yeah. Mag, Uruk Thracker, full, full, full name. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, it's, it's interesting seeing him against the aesthetic of the older orcs as well. Mm. And it, it once again sort of brings home this idea that, man, it would be really nice to see the actual the space orcs, the orcs get an upgrade and look a little bit more primarified effectively. Primar orcs? Sort of take them in sca- Primar orcs, yeah. Take yes. them, get, them, get them in line with the, the rest of the range at the moment. We, so. we named Prime this last week. Nobs, Porks. Man. Prime Nobs. Orcs. Porks, that was it. Yeah, yes. that's it. Porks. Yeah. Yeah, and then you've got Gazgul's <laughs> little buddy with him. That's a bit. That's a bit. If there was anything disappointing about the box set, that would be it for me. Is that um, I, I would like to have seen the orcs uh, get a refresh now because a bit of love. you know the the rest of the. Uh, I suppose we still have a lot of years ahead of us. Ninth edition apparently is on the way. Who knows? That makes um, nervous. Maybe maybe with ninth ninth edition on the way, we could be seeing this uh, uh, new upgrades to the Imperial Guard and uh, to the orcs. Or maybe we won't. Maybe we won't. But it, it strikes me as strange, the, the design aesthetic change between mm-hmm. our Gazgul, Gazgul, Long Dong, <laughs> Rigmarole. <laughs> and, That's and, his Sunday name. Yeah. And, uh, and his, his band of knobs. You know? mm-hmm. so, it's like, so this is all for yeah. Saga of the Beast. Yeah, yes. so this is all flowing into this, the next book in the Psychic Awakening uh, saga, which follows um, Ragnar going up against Gazgul and uh, and their sort of ensuing conflict between the two of them. Because one of the big things that we talked about last week, obviously, is that both of them have effectively died, but were brought back in some way, either through the Rubicon Primaris or through the mad, crazy work of Orc Doctors. Uh, yeah, and so did, they're getting stuck into another fight. So. Didn't Gazgul get his head cut off? Gaskell did get his head cut off, and you can actually see on the miniature there's the little stitch marks around the, the head uh, where it was cut off and then put into a new orc. That's so. never been anything that slows an orc down any time. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can just, just grow a couple more mushrooms and you'll be fine. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more concerned about the fact that going through the Primaris nonsense turns your hair black. Is this some oh. way of Grecian 2000? Because Ragnar used to be blonde when well, he was a space viking. Back back in the day, day yeah. yeah. Back, back in the back in the day. <laughs> but guess what, Terry? In the just future, for men. they have just for men. <laughs> <laughs> now I wonder if they call it just for wolves. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. it's coming out, guys. It's a popular box set. Um, uh, we know this because um, our resident genius Tom sent out a uh, a message to um to people that have uh, st- shopped at the store and stuff and said to him look this is coming out if you'd like to put yourself on the wait list uh, to be uh, notified of as and when it goes up on pre-order uh, fill it out um i i said yeah good idea tom i i don't know if many people will buy it i was wrong <laughs> i was completely <laughs> wrong the, tom was absolutely right it, it just went <laughs> So it, it, it's it's a lot more popular than I expected, but it's got that amazing uh, Gasgol model in it, man. And does it come it, with the book inside it this time? 
It comes with or, a cut down version of the rules, and there's also a scenario booklet yeah. as well. Uh, so, so you don't yeah. get the the Psychic Awakening book in the box. No, no. So Saga of the Beast is still um, separate yeah. from Philosophy, yeah. from Prophecy of the Wolf. Oh, so yeah. Someone say Saga. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> okay. Next up, um, Modiphius. Uh, we have some new characters for uh, Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Yeah, so uh, this is a new set of releases that came out this week for Fallout Wasteland Warfare, uh, and it's all to deal with sort of um, growing your collection to include a lot more of the uh, sort of side characters and well-loved characters from the world of uh, Fallout, as well as a couple of other bits and pieces too. So the first set is called Unusual Allies, and it features, and I've learned the names now, Nick Valentine, who is the uh, the sort of synth cop on the left. Detective. You've also got... You've also got uh, uh, John Hancock, detective, sorry. Yeah. You've got John Hancock on the far mm -hmm. right. And there's also Strong, who is the uh, mutant in the center as well. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. sure Justin can fill us in a little bit more on exactly who these characters are. Uh, but yeah, they're looking very cool. And it's a nice little set. Well, uh, so going from left to right, I know two of the characters really well. I actually didn't encounter the third character during my playthrough of the game. But uh, ah, okay. Nick right. is actually one of the, the main storyline characters. So you'll meet him at uh, Diamond City. And he's basically helping you track down your lost son in the game. So lots of fun there. Some really cool, like, gangster-style missions. Is he the detective? Missions. Yes. And there's, like, some cool okay. gangster-style missions that you actually play while you are you have him as a companion. Uh, yeah. The, the yeah. other guy on the far right is actually the mayor of, I believe it's Good Neighbor. Uh, basically, he's a, a bit of an amoral git who runs the city with an iron hand. <laughs> and they, they can become your companions in the game, which is quite fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Strong. Uh, he's a, he's a super mutant. That's all I need to hear. He dies. Uh, one yeah. of the one of the one of the cool things about sort of Fallout Wasteland Warfare is that it has these different styles of mode of play. So you can either play it competitively with sort of gangs, you can play it uh, cooperatively, or you can play it solo. And so these kind of characters being added into the mix is a really sort of interesting and new sort of uh, element for people. So they can either you know fight alongside Nick Valentine and Strong and that kind of guys, or you can go against them or just encounter them in the middle of a scenario. Maybe if you had a games master involved or something too. Uh, as well as the the sort of unusual character uh, allies pack, there's also the one that you're looking at now, which is the Vault personnel. Uh, say if you want some maybe some additional survivors that you want to play as or some sort of people that you want to bump into as you're sort of going throughout the wasteland and you've got some interesting options there you've got some guys in their sort of you know traditional vault tech style jumpsuits and then you've also got some slightly more armored individuals at the same yeah, time the security forces for the vault mm. yeah and then the other set that they've released, which is the third one, which is called the T-51 Power Armor set. Mm -hmm. And so this is um, effectively, Power Armor is normally used by only certain individuals within the game or certain factions. But, you know, if you scavenge enough parts from across the wasteland, you might be able to build your own suit of Power Armor. And if you want to potentially go up against some of the bigger creatures that are in the wasteland in this post-apocalypse, then you're going to have to have some Power Armor to do so. So if you want to have some interesting characters like that, then you can pick up some of these and customize them to your yep. heart's content. I love the idea of spraying loads of cool graffiti and stuff onto them. Like, that, like that giant ants, yeah. which scared me out of the video game. That was it. <laughs> first giant ant, I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's it it's over one of the things i really loved about fallout 4 was that you were actually able to customize the different marks of armor that you were putting together on your armor rack so it wouldn't have to be all a full single set type you actually have right. a usable set yeah. of fire armor mm -hmm. i wish they had done it with these miniatures and i would really love to see them maybe revisit it and do that with them yeah. they, they, they might do, one of the big things that Modipius have <laughs> said um, from the outset, especially with um, Fallout and their newer game, which is Elder Scrolls, which is coming out soon as well, up for pre-order at the moment, I think. We talked about that on a previous weekend. Uh, but mm. they, they basically have access to everything that Bethesda has, has ever really done for this. So they are really going to be diving into it and bringing out some stuff for it. They've, they've done big models, they've done small models, they've done all the different characters and stuff. So, mm. yeah, it's a really nice mix so, of things. And hopefully so you're like saying there's more in the vault to come? There is oh. more in the vault to come, yes. I am wondering <laughs> if they're going to do anything from Fallout 76, because uh, it's a game that I have played. It's something I got bored of, but I'm tempted to go back to it seeing these. <laughs> they, they are bringing well, yeah. NPCs to that one now, which is making me very happy. They are. They're actually making Fallout 76 into a well, game. Did you it's ever evil. think you would it's, hear it's someone go, well, they're bringing NPCs into a game to make it interesting? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, honestly, Fallout 76 it just felt empty because you were just your missions. You find them on like data sheets, random pages littered around the world. It's just like, 
no, I want someone to talk to me. I want to feel like the world has life in it. Well, now Jerry. the best thing is you could play it on the tabletop and do it yourself. So, yeah. yeah. Jerry, <laughs> yes, how, do we get the, how do we get them to shut up so as we can talk about World War II British Paris? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I would reach out and slap them, but they're all too far away. They're too far <laughs> away, man. I'm, I'm, you're just, shut up! Right. The, <laughs> great stuff, but yeah. offensive miniatures are releasing yeah. oh. World War II British pirates. Yeah. yeah. You see if you've lost this, Justin. <laughs> I haven't I, lost it. I just <laughs> clicked the wrong button. Calm down. Oh, okay. So, oh, Jerry, okay. This so is there. This is the bit we've go. been waiting for. Jerry, tell, Jerry, have you had a chance to have a look at these, mate? I have. I've had a, a wee scally through the actual um, Paris, but Offensive Miniatures is a, a company I've known for years because they do some absolutely gorgeous stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so in this case, offense, you'll find they're slightly bigger than um, the sort of foundry or warlord, but not hugely so, so they'll still mix in fairly well. Uh, and these are just absolutely a uh, beautiful set of Paris if you want to do your um, into the the lowlands and your uh yeah bridge too bridge, far that sort of thing yeah. this one yeah yeah um, but it's a nice set of, set of packs as well so you've got the, the various ones both with the um gilly sort of helms on and then also mm. the standard beret setups but uh as you would expect from offensive it comes with the full range of of support weapons and uh standard unit sort of setup for them so yeah beautiful beautiful pack um, the full set is, is it 36, so it's a full, you run a full yeah. platoon, essentially. So, really? yeah. you, you can get a box of a full platoon of 36 guys. Yeah, right? yeah. so you've got yeah. your command, your fire sections, and your support, uh, or you can pick them up individually. But Offensive is a... Uh, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, lovely. Offensive is a great company. They do some absolutely stunning stuff. and They, they yeah. really just seem to fly under the radar for a lot of people, or in this case, fly above the radar and then drop them. <laughs> 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 Very cool looking. Mm. I love yeah, it, the cash on the the first guy. It's it's well worth going to go and check out the the rest of the stuff on their web store because they've done mm. some really nice they've done some really nice sculpts and things. I picked out some of the ones that I thought were quite interesting and cool. Yeah. But, um, mm. There's a really nice sort of mix of stuff there to go and check out. And one of the things that I think is really cool about like little tiny packs like this is that it kind of gets me thinking about playing World War Two in a different way. Like a lot of people think about playing World War Two and having it on it sort of like a medium scale, you know, with a couple of different platoons of men fighting with ta alongside tanks and that kind of thing. Yeah. I like the idea of playing with like a much smaller subset of men, maybe five or six at a time and doing a little bit more of a skirmishy style thing. Yeah. And I know like Warlord have done rules and stuff like that. And there's lots of other ways for you to dive into that too. But it, I, I just like seeing packs like the Paras and the kind of like little tiny ops that they used to do during World War II gets me thinking about that kind of style of World War II instead of the bigger battles, I think. So. Well, Especially if you're going to do... Sorry, boy. No, go ahead, Jerry. Okay. If you're going to do things like that, offensive miniatures have things like uh, Volkssturm, so the, the last line right. of defense in Germany. So you can get Volkssturm on bikes. So you can have That's your, cool. your guys yeah. with Panzerfeuer strapped over the back and, and cycling along, or um, they do tank rider models. They, they do the more sort of esoteric things that you might not find yeah. on yeah. a lot of the bigger sites because they're, they're focusing on you know rank and file and, and the things that will sell all the time, whereas offensive miniatures can go, well, you know, we can do some of that. But also, have you considered a child with a Panzerfeuer, <laughs> a guy on a bike? You on, no, I haven't, but now you've mentioned that. I think that's a genius idea. Yeah, I appreciate uh, that. See, I, I would so, run these for Chain of Command all day. Yeah, yeah. Chain of so Command Jerry, would be a good choice for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's very important, Jerry, that, mm. we, that we reach an understanding in this new format that whenever it comes yes. to historical and we're competing to talk, you always go first because I'm infinitely, <laughs> I'm infinitely more likely to tell lies. <laughs> You're the cargo for no. lies. Yes, yes, so yes. Uh, from my perspective, the Paris mm -hmm. are awesome because they're, they're the one group that I can imagine. Uh, if you're talking about just gaming with that pack of 36, mm -hmm. right? That They're the one group that I can imagine raiding like the, a nuclear research facility or something oh, like that you know? heavy water. and just have yeah just have them guys going in uh, they've landed in there you can have all sorts of cool rules for them landing and, and where they've landed at and you just get a whole bunch of nazi scientists and ah <laughs> <laughs> it would be great and so we want to play 7 tv and completely 
historically accurate. Incredibly, incredibly historically accurate, yeah. <laughs> right. Sticking with the historical specter of Baba Yaga and uh, Aftermath Kill Team. What yeah. do we know about that? So um, Spectre Miniatures came out with a couple of new releases uh, towards the end of last week, and these are very much sort of focused towards the idea of um, stepping away from the typical uh, sort of engagements that you would think in the Middle East and stuff that, you you know, Spectre are quite famous for, and moving towards something a little bit more specialized and scenario-specific. And the mm -hmm. first of these is the model for Baba Yaga there, which is based on one John Wick. And maybe you want to try and drop this assassin into one of your games and use him as a specialist that's sort of maybe either working for one of your sides in a sort of criminal um, scenario. Or maybe, maybe he's acting against both of you. And, you know, both of you are trying to work to try and, you know, get to a target, but he's also racing to it at the same time. And the, the interesting thing is, is that Spectre's rules really cater to that kind of gameplay, where there's also, like, you know, different elements in the battle alongside, the, you know, your two traditional forces. So if you want to get yourself an awesome, you know, version of John Wick, Baba Yaga, on the tabletop, and there's that very cool looking miniature there with his pistol at the ready they did actually do a version of him bef before um but um this one's a slightly new version of him which comes with the pistol out instead of the rifle and stuff that was there before i believe uh, but yeah very awesome looking little miniature there for a little bit of uh, scenario based play mm. and the other set they've done uh maybe is pertinent to today i guess but this is the <laughs> aftermath a kill team. On the news. Yeah. Uh, and this is a set of this is to go into their sort of criminal um, section on their website. And the idea of this is that they would potentially uh, be maybe gang members or stuff like that that have dressed up in these hazmat suits to maybe do a bank job or something like that. Maybe you want to sort of throw them into something a little bit like the, the scene from uh, the the second Batman film from Christopher Nolan, you know, that kind of like bank scene with the Joker and stuff. These would be a very cool yeah, fit yeah. for something like that. Maybe a little bit of something like Ronin, maybe something like that too. That'd be cool. But not See, Ronin, clear, clearly I would use these for like the walking dead, you know, this is the CDC going out to grab supplies before. Going you could also do that research. too. Yeah. You could also use them as, as terrorists in certain situations as well. And that kind of thing as well. So they've got a really nice sort of mix across the whole range of different scenarios and stuff. You could play John with. has one of these suits cool. as well. I asked him about it last week. <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah. He has a full hazmat, your hazmat suit. He's like, Oh, I'm too fat for it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I, wow. I can officially announce that um, I am, uh, I've been invited to work on Spectre's uh, new expansion, new game. Um, uh, so what I've done is I've reached out to both Spectre and to Foreground um, to pull together a brand new um, release that is going to come out. Uh, and it's Foreground are putting together their shopping center and Spectre are putting together the two factions of uh, Delta Force and Toilet Roll Stockpilers. And, uh, <laughs> and we're we are going hunting. So um, I have this completely under control and it's going yeah. to be amazing. I'm thinking of calling the game Insertion. <laughs> Yes, I think it'd be good. Yes. <laughs> a right. wipe too far. A wipe too <laughs> far. <laughs> right, last one, okay? Mm. We've got room for one more. Mm. Yeah. Crocodile Games, War Gods of Olympus. Yeah. What's going on with it, Ben? So Crocodile Games have been around for quite a while. Uh, they're a little bit more of sort of, a, I guess you'd say, an underground company that have been doing stuff for a while, but never really sort of peeking out. But they've uh, been working on some fascinating looking um, uh, troops and characters and monsters and things for playing out fantasy games, which are based within the worlds of mythology. Uh, their new book, which is coming out, is called War Gods of Olympus, and this is focused around the idea of playing games um, centered around Greek mythology. So you're going to have things like demigods, uh, you've got the you know Spartans and Athenians, you've got uh, sort of uh, some of the massive monsters like Minotaurs and that kind of thing as well. And their range is, is absolutely fantastic. It's all sort of based around the idea of a little bit more of like a rank and file style game, uh, but it's also linked into a game that came out previously called uh, War Gods of Egyptus. So as they've got uh, both of the different pantheons of both ancient Greece and ancient Egypt together into one range here, which is looking absolutely fantastic. And the cool thing is as well, is that both of these games are completely compatible. Um, so if you have Egyptus and Olympus, you can play across the two, you can mix and match things as you want. There's, there's, like there's an too. image, there's an image uh, I want to see, Justin. That's the one. No, oh. don't one. 
That one. Okay. <laughs> I'm just zoom in. Widows. I that one. We cannot zoom in. <sighs> the the Amazon right. horse widows. Yeah. They're all with their pikes. Mm. Yep. If if you uh -huh. look at Titans and monsters, is it Titans and monsters? Uh, I don't know. I've, that yeah. Does that continue? That's yes, it does. Why are you after? Uh, oh, the Hydra yeah. is a particular favorite of mine. I have a chunk of these. Their Spartans are lovely. Oh, I have the, oh, Look at that. There's a Cyclopean set hiding in there somewhere, which is, uh, it's got a ice elf, um, ice queen, and mm. Wendigo, and yeah. you know, yeah. stuff like that there. So it's, uh, Jeff's just been going for a little while. Chris Fitzpatrick, who pretty much re-sculpted the Dark Elf range for GW. Uh, when he left GW, went to Canada and was the main sculptor. I think he still is the main sculptor for mm. Crocodile. Um, so, yeah. These are incredible. One of the cool I things I like about these oh. is that they do those demigod miniatures. Yeah. So they're effectively versions of the gods on the tabletop and yeah. slightly more of a less, less sort of think Mythic Battles Pantheon style, but s smaller versions of them. And they mm -hmm. look absolutely amazing. I love some of the ones they've done, like Ares is really cool and Hades and all that kind of lot. I, I Greek mythology was one of those sort of areas of history that I grew up with, and so seeing stuff like this is is really awesome. So, <laughs> what a beautiful range! Really, yeah. really beautiful. Yeah. As, as I say, it's really worth diving in and checking out the rest of the stuff that they've got because, uh, as I say, they're a little bit more of an underground company that are sort of rising back up through Kickstarter and that kind of thing as well. And um, one of the things I just mentioned about the book is that it's available as both that sort of traditional version of it that you saw in the image, but there's also going to be like a hardback version with like the leather lovely leather finish to it and everything like that too so if you like something a little bit more plush you had me at hardback <laughs> you had oh, me at leather <laughs> right that is your lot that is the news Right. To save all of our minds, we are now officially launching the 2020 Spring Clean Challenge. And no, it's not what you think. It's not the fact that we're all now trapped at home. We have to clean the place. <laughs> <laughs> the fair, I have done that. Yeah, the, the Spring Clean Challenge is it's my favorite uh, thing throughout the year. So we're going to run this for the entire springtime. So we're going to do it from now until, what, the 20th of June? June. Yep. Yep. So launches now, runs to the 20th of June. And uh, basically, you come across to on tabletop.com, you set up a project, and the Spring Clean Challenge is about taking a project that you've done in the past and breathing a new lease of life into it okay so it might be a part finished project it might be a project that you're looking at and going do you know what i could i could do better i can fix this up i can do something uh, something just more with it um this is your chance um we're doing some prize support for this as well so um we uh we will, <laughs> we will award 50 pound vouchers for the store um and there are, are four categories are the best skill so for the most skilled work in your sprinkling challenge best tutorial so in other words you've done something and you've documented it really well so people could follow along best idea so ir 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 regards of the skill or ir regards of the the tutorial side if it's a really cool idea then you get a voucher and best junior member. Now, now that we're all trapped at home with our little ones, now's the time to get them to do some projects and um, get them in there under the best junior member. Someone under the age of 16 will give them a voucher that you can spend on your behalf. <laughs> now, just to recap that before someone asks, it's a yes. 50 time voucher. Bring up the picture, please, Dustin. Not a problem. Now, which is this open worldwide or what's what's because worldwide scroll on up there justin yeah so has, 50 yeah. pound four 50 pound vouchers to be won yes for four. the store and it, and this uh, the the sprinkling challenge is worldwide it doesn't matter where you are in the world 
you can enter this and you will get your 50 pound voucher to spend yeah. and you can spend it on anything you want in the store we will ship it to you okay but it has to be done inside a project yes yes it has so to be it has done, to be done inside a project uh, and one of the key things also to remember with this is that the 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 four categories or at least the three categories so skill tutorial and idea are tied to the um sort of uh, little uh, thumbs up you can give in each of the projects and so yep. the community can help to inspire and give you know references yes. to certain projects by you know thumbing up the things they think are the most skilled the best Justin, why don't you bring up a project and That's we can show say. that in action okay. um, because no just so as you're all aware it's not it's not going necessarily to the person with the most thumbs up in any particular yeah, yeah. Category. but it, it'll guide our thinking but it, so. it helps <laughs> us narrow down so Okay, um, so let's pick one. Let's go. No, no, let's go up to just show them how to create a project. Okay. Yes. So the first thing you're going to do is this button here. Yeah. Uh -huh. We click in through to that to add project, and then we have yep. these fields to fill in. So mm -hmm. project name, the type of project, which is a drop down. Yep. So depending on what you. And it do. can be anything at all. You know, it could mm -hmm. be a cosplay. It could be whatever you want it to be. Yeah. You can mark in your genres. So say it was cyberpunk, family, fantasy, things like that. You've got the status of the project. So what stage the project itself is at. So you can mark them when they're complete, so people will know. Okay, there shouldn't be anything more coming from this. On yep. hold, tell people. Okay, they're taking a break from it and coming back to it. Mm -hmm. Active is you working on it and cancelled. Yeah, we don't really use cancelled here. And the great, <laughs> the great thing about the on hold thing is it might be nice to see projects that have put them put on hold coming out of hibernation for the yeah, spring you do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've then got your visibility. So you can actually set it to private, set it so your friends can see it, or set it to publish. If you're wanting to enter, you're going to need to hit publish, but you can use private and then update it later to actually have it like pre-built whenever you set it live for folks. Yeah. Uh, you then got a little about this project, so just a little blurb on what you're doing. And then you have to put a header image in. So this will put that main top image in for you. Mm -hmm. You've then got any related games, related companies, and related contests. This is where the spring cleaning challenge will be. Yes. So and that is the basic. Make sure and select project. the spring clean hobby challenge in there. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, so then if you go into a project then for us, Justin. Okay, I will go to the projects page. What do and we, we can do? just show people what to uh, what to click. Okay. Um, so, uh, what let's, deck is painted? Yeah, yeah, that's a good as any. Look at this one. No, whenever you come into these, mm -hmm. uh, it's core eight ball. Oh, it's core. Yeah. 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 No, you have an option in here, so you can tell it to show you the oldest entries first, because whenever you load in, you're generally going to see what's the, the newest, end of the project, yeah. mm -hmm. and then if you flip it around, this is now showing us the first steps. So you can throw some pictures in here to show people what you're working on. Mm -hmm. uh, you can throw text blurbs in here. You can throw galleries in here if you want to put multiple pictures yeah. into the one thing. Yeah. Sophia lives. No, if but you scroll you put up, some fancy lists in and things like that. Yeah, there's lots of functions there, guys, that you can use to lay out your project. But if you scroll up, Justin, mm -hmm. uh, the important bit I want to show you is, that, that is this little graph. Okay, so tutoring. Um, so uh, there's three little buttons there, Justin. If you can yeah. show them, if you click so, them, so tutoring, click tutoring, skill, skill. And idea. and idea. So basically, when you're looking at an entry in a project, you can say, that's a really good idea, and give them an idea nomination. Mm -hmm. Or that was some good tutorial work there, give them a tutorial nomination. Or that's some really good skills shown there, and give them a skill nomination. Mm -hmm. And then that all goes to the recommendations chart there, which mm -hmm. um, uh, builds up. The, so from that, we can see the projects, and collectively you can as well, the projects that are more kind of tutorial orientated, or more really cool idea orientated, or mm -hmm. maybe just showing some really cool skill sets. Yes. Well yes. done, Justin. Well <laughs> done. <laughs> we have 2020 now. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if that would ping up or no. Uh, you've also got this little button up the top here as well, Warren. Follow. Yes. If someone's doing something you think's really cool, click that, and you'll get little yes. updates whenever things are being added into it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there you go, guys. So um, get stuck in there. Now, I want to talk to my fellow team members here. Mm -hmm. um, I mind. will be entering the Spring Clean, 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 the spring clean, clean Challenge. But I'll be doing it next week because mm. um, there's so much going on 
I don't have the bandwidth, but I wanted to chat to you guys about some of the ideas that you might have for the sprinkling challenge, um, just to see the kind of things that uh, you might do. I could kick off with one. Okay, I, I shall allow it. Would you, would you allow it? Yeah. I okay, it, so yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking I have three that are kind of sitting that I could do. Um, one is um, LSR, one of the community members, um, sent us in uh, these gorgeous painted Napoleonic miniatures. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there is a problem with them. They're all on square bases. <laughs> <laughs> these square bases. <laughs> He's probably sitting there so, going, uh, yeah! there's, there's, th there's three forces there. So there's French, British, and who are the there, other ones? There, there's a guerrilla faction which could be Portuguese or might mm -hmm. be Spanish, but yeah. certainly it's Peninsula Campaign, so it could be either mm -hmm. or. So what I'm thinking of doing is um, is going in, maybe doing a, a, a well, I will at some point, a, a really nice rebase job across mm. all of those, mm. and uh, base them up into three skirmish forces that we could maybe do a little bit of a, a battle through a Laha Saint kind mm, of a, a, a thing. So that that's that's option one. Option two and two and two <laughs> because I'm stuck at home. Okay, with the kids. Um, I might have a further look at my D&D storage system that mm. I've been working on, okay? And uh, because I still have a pile of D&D stuff that I haven't transferred yeah. into the storage system yet. You're so going to retrofit. This could be a good opportunity for me to, to go back to that storage system and, and show uh, how that works. Yeah, you Especially could Especially considering this. the fact that I reached out to the manufacturer <laughs> um, uh, months ago and I have a ton of the boxes and the foam sitting wow. in the store that we were going to, that we were going <laughs> to put on, to the, on store the store at some point. Yes, they oh, were meant to go we on the store. We were meant to turn that into a product. What we were. <laughs> so. What are you trying to fit in? More minis, or are you just going to retrofit this to put your kids in the storage system? <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah, self-isolation 2.0. I will, I, will, I will do the mini. And then my third option, which is another really interesting one, is I have a Mongol fantasy army setting that I could extend my fantasy army. I went through a thing of making rebasing fantasy armies. I have a painted Mongol force that I could do that to. Mm. Um, so of the three, they're all very appealing to me right now. Um, and I may go for something else completely different, but they're three that have come to my mind. What about you guys? Uh, well, I there are two possible ones. One of them, Jerry has already kind of shot me down on because I mentioned it last week on the XLBS. Uh, which I'll is... shoot you down on it this week then. <laughs> well, basically, <laughs> I'm wanting to, to go back to an old uh, costume I did last year, the 40k Guardsman, and I want to update yes. that to rank it up to, say, a sergeant with a power sword, plasma pistol. So I would be doing new stuff, but for an old project. Well, no, that's okay, but, yeah, but, yeah. but that's easy. All we do is mask off your shoulder pad and put a red stripe on it. <laughs> no, because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm changing up the weapon, so instead of just running around with a rifle, I want a sword and a pistol. Ah, so I, I've okay. actually been doing some work on this already, which uh, I will show everybody this Sunday on the XLBS for my hobby time. The other one is actually from the 40K weekend. So we did a 40K weekend where we did like a start collecting weekend. So everybody that came along got some paints, they got a spray can, they got a start collecting box. Yes. I decided to go in on that as a punter. Unfortunately, yes. BBC, I was dumb and I overloaded myself and I sort of sickened myself of painting <laughs> the army. I sickened <laughs> yourself myself of that weekend. painting the yeah. army. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sickened <laughs> myself that weekend. That was a different way. But it's been <laughs> on a shelf gathering dust ever since. And I feel kind of ashamed for it because I do want to play Imperial Should Guard. Be. So I might pick that up again and start maybe working through maybe, say, a squad in a week. You know, set myself some goals yeah. to actually say, okay, just do this much. And I think if you get to there, you're doing good. That's my thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lloydy? Where do I start? Uh, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I can see your hobby hoarding. Your hoard is showing Lloyd. So many started projects and started yeah. projects. I do have can I just planning. say, you and Jerry's apocalypse planning has been awesome. <laughs> I'm sitting here in a house that has like no shelving. No, I'm not kitted out for a hobby here at all. Why do you think um, my place is so close to the studio, Warren? You know, mm. Whenever everything goes down, I'm just moving into the office. Yeah. What, what are you thinking of doing, Lude? 
Uh, well, I do have this, but it's not hobby cleaning. So I'm trying to like maybe think of something I could do in amongst that. And I have my my Spanish. Oh, oh very no. cool. Hang on, hang on. Let, me, let me get a closer look at that. That I haven't actually ever finished. I got like four mm. painted up uh -huh. and, just there, there and then just didn't get back to the project. So I was thinking, ooh. They're beautiful. Maybe it's, time to, maybe it's time to crack these dudes out and get yeah. painting. Maybe it's time yeah. to crack these dudes out and try them with some contrast paints. That could be good. These, are, these are obviously not contrast paints, but maybe contrast is an option here to get through some. Is it? Is it I, do you know what? Mm. I'd be reluctant to change whatever you're doing because they are beautiful. In they fact, really you're, you're really sickening my ass, little brother. <laughs> <laughs> how talented you are. You know, it's, I, I really... So maybe the Spaniards <laughs> for Blood and Blood there. Ben? What are you thinking of doing? Uh, so a couple of years ago now, I picked up the Doom board game from Fantasy Flight Games, and I was like, right, I'm going to paint all the miniatures from this because they look really cool. I and then you'll get all the hits because Doom well, Eternal yeah. is about to come out. Yeah, exactly. It's all very on brand. Uh, and so, But then like, a couple of months later, I was like, nah, I can't bother with this. Don't want to do it. But recently, obviously, the new con well, not recently, but the new contrast paints came out from Games Workshop, yeah. and they're making things a lot easier to work on these kind of things. So I am going to dive back into that Dune board game and finish touching up a lot of the models and finishing a lot of the models that I started but never got around to, specifically because last time I played Dune, which was about three weeks ago, my friend went, oh, man, these are awesome. Why haven't you painted them? And I was like, because it takes... And he was like, yeah, but dude, they, they can't take that much time to paint. And I was like, yeah. fine, I'll bloody paint them then. So. <laughs> <laughs> but now, every time we play a game that has any kind of figures in it, he goes, why are they not painted, Ben? And I'm like, it's not my game. <laughs> but I'm going to be painting them. So maybe you could see... I don't know. Maybe you could, uh, maybe let, let, me, let me get Ooh. a closer look here. So that's, that's one of the caco demons. That I'm Put your hand up behind it for me, Ben. You're a little out of focus there. And put it closer. Come closer. Come closer. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Uh, it's, no, it's, no, it's no, gone. It's not working. No, it's, gone. No. it's not working. It's focusing this on your hand. Only oh, well. loves Ben's face. Only loves me. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, well. so I'm working on that at the moment. The, the, cool, the cool thing about it, as I was saying, is that I'm trying to do it all with contrast paints. So mm. I'm working on like just a block color scheme. So it looks a bit like they're not full miniature painting. It's going to be yeah. sort of like done mm. in a style to match the board game. So a little bit like what we oh. kind of did back in the day with like Walking Dead and that kind of thing. So. Yeah. Cool. Jerry? Nice. I don't you're know. Si you're sitting in a, in a world of options. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really am. I, uh, I just opened up the uh, Desert Squirrel project for my <laughs> Africa core and realized, oh, my last update on that was 2018 in December. So it's yeah. been over a year. And literally, that was just going, here's how you paint each individual thing. Then all I had to do was go and paint them. Because that, <laughs> get, cause that showed how to do vehicles, what the unit markings were, what the weapons were and, and uniform types so it was a step-by-step -step guide for the deutsch africa core um so i could do that or i might do that i might do this as well this i don't it, think i'm digging through now i don't know no, I, I need to see this closer what oh oh oh, oh yes so, i remember seeing this so i'd done the u-boat but I'd never got around to weathering it. So the U-boat is, yeah. and I can't bring this up close because my light's behind me and it'll disappear, but the U-boat was kind of done-ish bar oh, final right, detail yeah. and weathering. Yeah. Um, in fact, if I get things like mm. that. That's and a I have beautiful a, model. And I have a set of crew for it as well. Mm, so yeah. what I might Very do cool. is go back, uh, fix up the paint job on it because there were some overspray in places because I was trying to get it done quickly so that we could have the Ark of the Covenant, um, <laughs> escaping, on, escaping on the U-boat at the Western Desert Boot Camp, and then we never got it done until, well, I never got it done time. Um, so the base U-boat was done, but the crew wasn't, and there was no detail or weathering. So what I might do is combo, because this and this, now I think about it, we're all done for the same things. This is the Africa yeah. Corps. Um, so I might actually go back, do the Africa Corps, because it was to be done very quickly. Um, yep do the U-boat, and then I'll have a completed army, and it means I can move on to the British half of the army. Is the crew in here? No, no, the crew isn't in here. 
Careful, boy. We might lose him. We might lose him immediately. The crew crew were on a little shelf here for what apparently was two years and maybe more. Uh, Uh, And then I went looking for them before the show when we were talking about this. And I was like, well, I could do that. They're not on that shelf. So I've tidied the crew away. That was clever. (laughs) They've gone (laughs) AWOL. I'll see them again. Right. Well, guys. Join us. Um, uh, go and fire up projects for whatever it is that you're going to take some time to breathe some new life into. Um, uh, we can't wait to see it. We're going to have a lot of fun over the next three months or so as we power through this together, support one another. You can do a couple of projects. There's no limits on this, guys. It's all about just having some fun and bringing stuff up to that level where we go, yeah, happy with that. Right. Sprinkling challenge, get stuck in. Ben, Mm -hmm. it's Kickstarter time. What have you picked for? Okay, Uh, so the first of these uh, comes from Medusa Miniatures, and this is a set of 3D printable, so wants to do it at home. Got my attention. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, obviously, a lot of the a lot uh, we've seen a lot of Kickstarter campaigns now focusing on creating STL files and that kind of thing for people to take home mm-hmm. and print up for themselves. And so this uh, this Kickstarter focuses on some stone giants and a stone giant family. Uh, so you've got the choice of two male giants, a female giant, and then there's also a baby stone giant crawling around on the floor. There is. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh. Creepy. He does yeah. super creepy. <laughs> I love that. Do, do not want. Do not want. Oh, I love that. Nightmare feel right there. I I love the idea of a encounter in Dungeons and Dragons where your guy your, your party adventure into a like a mountain hold or something, and they don't get attacked by the stone giant, but they get waylaid by a baby stone giant who's playing around with them, thinking they're just toys or something. I think that the really baby fun. got lost, and yes. you're trying to lead the baby back. Yes. yes, mommy and daddy stone giant, so that they don't come along and squish you for a, that would be very good. You've yeah. adopted their baby. Yeah, no, you yeah. see, what, what you and your party do is you sneak into the giant's home and you find their food on the table and you right. try and eat the daddy stone giant's food, but it's too hot. And you try oh, and eat the mommy stone giant's food, but it's too cold. <laughs> and then you eat the baby stone giant's food and it's just right. Yeah. It's the last book he read. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so as well as the stone giants that they've done, they've also got options for you to get your hands on um, files from their previous Kickstarters. So mm-hmm. they've got their Frost Giant 3D prints as well, uh, oh, which yeah. are sort of go around the same sort of um, focus. So you've got some male and female options in there as well as some sort of animal companions to go along at the same time. And then there's also uh, a whole bunch of stuff that they've done in previous Kickstarters as well. So mm. they did a really awesome thing called the Trapdoor Inn, which is what you're seeing wow. there, which looks very cool. Uh, they've also done things like fantasy hero collections and also uh, graveyard terrain. There's also oh, some villains wow. too. Um, so yeah, there's a really nice range of things that these guys have done. So Medusa seem very much like a company that has got their, you know, got a handle on the whole 3D printing element of things. Mm-hmm. So if you're interested, go and check it out. It's funded right now. About three days left from the time you're seeing this. So uh, jump so in quickly. Look. Cool. Yeah. It's heroes and a goat. Fan. Fan. <laughs> Always need a goat. Fantastic <laughs> choice. Um, I love those ghosts. Those ghosts mm-hmm. look mm-hmm. awesome. Nice choice, Ben. Very like good. that one. Right. Are you going to get two out of two this week? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so the second one of these is from the uh, people at Steel Fist Miniatures. And this is something that, very weirdly, I've got into quite a lot over the last two days or so. And that's the English Civil War. Uh, so the guys at Steel Fist, who are well known by a lot of people, do a, a nice new range on Kickstarter right now of historically accurate English Civil War figures in 15 millimeter. Uh, they're all done to. Uh, you know, both service the Cavaliers, the Royalists, and the Roundheads, so the Parliamentarians, so whichever side of the conflict you want to take on. And they've done a whole bunch of stuff. So they've got cavalry, they've got command elements, they've got line troops, riflemen, and a whole bunch of special characters from the period as well. And there's a whole bunch extra that you can sort of dive into as part of their website and everything too. But as I was saying, it's all 15 millimeter, which is really cool. And I yeah. like I like the detail that they've managed to get into a lot of this stuff as well, because obviously, you know, a lot of people have mis mis um, Sort of misconceptions about yeah. that this scale but there's actually so much detail you can get in 15 mil especially yes. and especially when you've got companies like steel fist which really really know their stuff 
you can get some very very intricate models and i think that yeah, that shows here as part of this campaign so See, yeah this would make a lovely 15 mil fantasy army it would as well yeah it'd be really good especially if you're yeah. doing something a little bit more empire based or something potentially exactly yeah. but, exactly um, well, well if you're when, not when doing you're empire based at... um steel fist do uh the italian wars so they oh, well, do, do, the, they perfect, do yeah. lunch next with all the, the with all the, the, the slash silk and that sort of stuff yeah, yeah. So well then the there's, a, there's an option because I, I would love to generate two kind of uh, 15 mil as i've been doing with the crusade army where it's a 15 yeah. mil uh, uh thing wouldn't it be awesome to do a 15 mil kind of fantasy army but it's more um cities of the empire kind of fantasy Mm. Two two factions fighting against one another. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So these but guys yeah. versus the Spanish or Italians, mm. sorry, mm. could but, be uh, awesome. Yeah. Although but, when you're looking at these uh without anything for skill reference, I'm not thinking 15 mil. That's how good the detail is. Yeah. Well, no, you know, they're they're, they're obviously 15 mil. Yeah. Um, because the, the the if they were 28 mil, the, the detail would be up another level again. Scroll you know, down. But it's 15 oh, mil, they're great. Down. Sorry, like, Yeah, I want to see would, their space station again. <laughs> that is a stretch goal. Look at that awesome space station. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would very operational. <laughs> uh, Love to the, do this. I was going to say actually, one of the cool things like that sort of drove me towards this project was I was looking at some stuff by a company called First Corp, who oh, oh, yeah. First Corp, who do a whole bunch of really awesome yeah. um, English and American Civil War and loads of other stuff as well. And it, I think to a degree, it's the kind of pageantry of this uh, the English Civil War that really gets to me especially on the obviously the royalist cavalier side and I was talking with Jerry before the show and we were saying how oh, Jerry was saying how you would never want to really paint it because there'd be so much you'd have to do with those guys but mm. if you want to make it easy on yourself you go parliamentarians because they're all like basically one color like uh, buff, buff coats and steel <laughs> exactly. helms the way you go yeah stay, then, stay clear of the Montrose Scots yeah, but that's that's really cool though because you've got that really nice asymmetry between the two different factions yeah. and obviously their belief systems as well. And there's so many places around uh, the United Kingdom, obviously within England as well, that are very much, you know, have a lot of that English Civil War history about them. So there's plenty of places to go and learn a little bit more about it. Like, um, well, my grandparents used to live down in Purbeck, and there's a castle there called Corfe Castle, and it's been a place of like defensive nature for years and years and years stretching back to the saxon times but during the time of the english civil war there was a massive siege there and it got sundered by the parliamentarians so no one else could use it again and stuff so it's a really nice rich environment to sort of dive into and explore that kind of history and stuff so so yeah as you can tell i'm quite excited by the english civil war so <laughs> and that delightful mr cromwell did an awful lot for uh, urban renewal in and around drogheda <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Right. Nine yeah. days to go on that one, guys. So if you if you fancy that, go and get stuck in. Yeah. That, my friends, is the end of the show this week. It couldn't come soon enough. My ass is killing me. <laughs> uh, really, um, You're at home. You should oh, be comfortable. If you, oh, this is the worst chair ever, Justin. I'm going to have to rework something here because you'll have seen me jumping around and my ass is killing me here. Yeah. I'm going to have to <laughs> you know, kind of have the problem. Oh. You're not getting a delivery anytime soon. <laughs> right. We're done. Um, we will be back again next week. We're going to keep working at this till we try and uh, see how we make all of this work going forward. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you can, please come across and support us and uh, join the Cult of Games and hook up with us again on Sunday morning when we have XLBS. Um, until then, please stay safe, stick together, and we will get out the other side. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.